The second half of the season is set to start, and we're already just a few weeks away from the trade deadline. Let's discuss if the Yankees have a legitimate shot at making the postseason. You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you for making us your first listen every day. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias, and with me, as always, is my producer, Steve Granado. Steve, what's going on? Hey, welcome to the show, everybody. Happy Thursday. Baseball tomorrow, finally. We're back at it uh, after a couple of days off here. Hey, coming up on today's show, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to take a break from baseball in our final segment. We'll tell you what that means a little bit later on in the show. But first, AC, we need to talk about the second half. Yesterday, on yesterday's show, we talked about the first half. And we wanted to preview the second half a little bit and talk about the Yankees in their current standing and if they have a legitimate shot at making the postseason. I think they do. And I think they will make the postseason in 2023. That's what I honestly feel. Yeah. So we're going to talk about pitching a little later. I wanted to start with just kind of the basics and then also obviously start talking about the offense, which we've kind of talked about a little bit and how in flux that's been and mm-hmm. especially will continue to be in. <laughs> um, but first, Stacey, just the, the basic info. Yankees 49 and 42 here heading into the second half. Fourth in the American League East, eight games back. They are one game back of a wild card spot in the American League. They are in fourth place. I also wanted to talk about the strength of schedule here, Stacey, because I think that is a massive factor. When we talked about whether the Yankees are going to be buyers or sellers at the deadline a couple of weeks ago, we said a lot of it had to do with that record by the time they're getting closing in on the break. So, again, 49 and 42, seven games over five. Remember, last season of 2022, seven games over five got you a wild card, which is what we have both agreed the Yankees are vying for the wild card, right? Right. Could, could Tampa continue to fall? Possibly. But I don't think we can bang it. Right. I think the wild card is a safer bet. So let's let's go with that train of thought, right? So the Yankees have 71 games left. Uh, of those 71, they will play Tampa Bay three uh, six times, rather Toronto six times, Boston six times, and Baltimore three times. Uh, they'll play the Orioles three times on the road. They do not come to Yankee Stadium the rest of the season. Uh, both Tampa or all Tampa, Toronto, and Boston are split evenly. So three and three road and home the games leading to the deadline, which is August 1st, the Yankees in this order will go to Colorado for three starting tomorrow, three in Anaheim, three at home against Kansas city, two against the Mets at home. Then those three games against Baltimore, the last three games against Baltimore. And then we'll have one game at home against Tampa Bay. When you look at that schedule, the three games against Colorado, the three games against Kansas City, the two games against the Mets, That those are winnable series. Right. Those are very winnable series. They could win in Anaheim. Uh, they could maybe take two or three in Baltimore. Right. So it is, weirdly enough, post-deadline, post-August 1st, the schedule gets much tougher. But leading to the deadline is fairly easier. Yeah. Your thoughts on that and where we talk about the Yankees. I mean, I don't want to get too buyer sellers here, but like where they think they can have a legitimate shot by the time we get to August 1st. Yeah. You know, when you look at those matchups, especially the Colorado and Kansas City, those should be winnable series. But there have been other instances where we've gone into series thinking they're winnable Cubs, Cardinals, and the Yankees don't do as well against those teams. And I almost feel like this might be one of those situations where the teams you don't expect them to do well against, they will. And the ones you expect them to do well against, they won't. Um, You know, this is all in their hands. If they can do well in this 15 game stretch, say 10 and five, that would be pretty good actually. Right. That would be really good. Yeah. Like nine and six or 10 and five. Like as long as they stay like three, or, you know, above, I don't know. I, I feel like if they do nine and six, they'll be okay. They can't do the opposite. Cause that would be <laughs> yeah. like a, um, a death knell. Yeah. That would just be really bad for them. But I'm just worried about, I'm actually worried about the Colorado series, to be honest. I don't know why I just am. Well, we'll see, uh, how that shakes out. Of course that starts Friday night. Uh, 
Stacey, you also, I also think we very important to point out because yes, that's all, all 15 games to the deadline mm-hmm. and that ends on the deadline. The Yankees yeah. would want to make a couple of moves before the deadline, obviously. <laughs> right, right. So I'm thinking this 10 game stretch, I'm looking yeah. at 10 games. They go seven and three in those 10 games plus four that puts it at 11 over five. Right. So that is great shape, great yeah. shape. Seven and three might be a tall task with, a, with six of those games being on the road. Right. Yes. So a little tougher, a little tougher. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll obviously face off uh, with Tampa Bay. As we mentioned, they'll see Houston, Miami, Atlanta. Uh, they'll see the Nats. They'll see the Tigers. Um, they'll see Toronto. They'll see Arizona. Um, and they'll also see Milwaukee. So some of those in Pittsburgh too, but they'll see some teetering teams. They'll see some really tough teams and they'll see some should winnables, but you know, we'll see. Uh, we wanted to talk about the offense today too, Stacy. Um, second half key. It's, it's been the key for two months. <laughs> when is judge back? Right. That is so extremely crucial. If the Yankees aren't confident that judge is back by the end of August, I th- do you think they just close up shop? Oh, I don't know. The end of August or the end of July? August. Mm. Mid-August? That's what I was saying, by the end of August. So they have him for 25 like the, games in September. Right, for like the stretch. Oof. I don't even want – I don't want to think about that. Um, I don't he's know. he's not progressing fast here. He's not. By all accounts, he's not moving along. Yeah, I know. I don't know. I don't know what they do. I don't know if they do like a, I don't know, like let's dedicate this to judge kind of thing and <laughs> keep the push going. Cause I, and I don't know if they just be like, all right, just get ready for next season, yeah. <laughs> get the surgery, get ready for next season, you know, yeah. and heal because yeah. yeah I think- I'm, if it's clear that he's not going to be back for a September push, I say do the surgery now because it's going to have rehab time. And right. You just want to get it out of the way as soon as possible. And it seems like, at least from the comments, that he is anticipating potentially at least revisiting the idea of having surgery in the offseason for that toe. I think another big factor of this, Stacey, is Sean Casey. Um, how much of an impact is he going to make in the Yankees' approach? Uh, we talked about Sean Casey a couple days ago after the news broke, but your thoughts on if Sean Casey can make an impact as far as the Yankees offense is concerned. Well, I know that he spoke with a bunch of players and um, he was talking about how their bats are too quick and they're not. Yes. And we not talked, we're, we talked about it. Yeah. They're not lengthening at bats. They're, you know, a lot of them are swinging at first pitches, swinging at crappy pitches, not looking at the ball. They're not savages in the box this season at all they're not the guys that would take a bunch of pitches and you know that was the main reason why um Aaron Boone got pissed off in that game that he got thrown out of because he's like you know my guys know what the strike zone is you guys can't keep screwing this up and this iteration of the Yankees lineup they they just look awful and Casey said he spoke to a bunch of them and he wants to turn things around and he was a patient batter he didn't hit for power but his career average is 302 I mean he was a pretty good player and um, you know, he, he seems very excited too. like, yeah, I watched him talking on his podcast uh, the other day and he's very like amped and ready to roll. And I think that we talked about the energy of that. Like even this came out the, the other day that like the Yankees felt like they're pressing and under a microscope and like, they don't feel good in the box. Right. So that, I think that could be a big play of it. Obviously, we haven't really touched on too many players in specific, but I think Anthony Volpe is going to be a crucial piece moving forward. If he continues on this pace, he's going to be so huge for this offense that is struggling to get on base. I mean, Volpe has some pop is not known as a pop guy, but has some pop and he'll run into a home run every now and then, but it's so important that he gets on base because we've seen what he does when he gets on the base paths. I'm curious to see, If there's anything left in Josh Donaldson, I'm curious to see if the Yankees move on from Josh Donaldson, if they get aggressive and just say, Oswald, come on up. Let's figure this out now. Um, Or if they let it slide for a little bit longer. Quickly, your thoughts here. We got to wrap up. All right. Two things about Casey. He said he had chats with Judge Donaldson, Rizzo, Bader, and Volpe already. He said that he sensed that there was some tension among the Yankee hitters, which I don't know if that means just tension because they've 
they're feeling the pressure of not performing. And then he also said he grew his mustache in honor of Don Manningly, who was his hero. And I love that so much. So I just wanted to say that. Funny. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll see again if Peraza gets called, uh, if they move on from Donaldson, and if Volpe can continue to hit. If they can get anything out of Stanton, I think that would be a massive plus. And if they can get Rizzo to 70% of what he was in April, right. that is a huge, 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 huge win. Um, and we'll see. It might be enough. We're going to talk about the pitching aspect of it here in just a second. So make sure to stick around. Of course, you can drop your questions for Fan Mail Friday. We're going to have a massive, uh, a mega episode tomorrow about fan uh, with Fan Mail Friday. So make sure to get your questions in down below. If you want to skip that line, subtext is the way to do it. You can text us one and one. There's a 14 day free trial. All the information is in the episode description. So make sure to check that out. All right. When we come back, let's talk about pitching. Our new sponsor, Sleeper, is a fantasy sports and real money gaming app focusing on bringing people together through sports and gaming. Sleeper has become the fastest organically growing fantasy platform in the world with over 5 million active users. At Sleeper, it's not just about sports. It's about building personal connections and lasting memories. With Sleeper, predict the hottest baseball stats like home runs, hits, strikeouts, and much more to cash in on your daily fantasy baseball skills. Entries can be made in 30 seconds or less. It's that easy. And it's really easy to sign up for the app. Even I did it. And you can find me at StaySpace826. Download Sleeper in your app store and use promo code Locked On, and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. And sleep, see Sleeper's terms of use for details. Currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. Back now here on Locked On Yankees, our second segment. Hey, to the everydayers, you guys already know Fan Mail Friday is tomorrow. Drop those questions down below. And all the everydayers already know this as well. You can catch the entire season, including this upcoming Colorado Rockies series on Sirius XM. Stacy, okay, I wanted to talk about pitching today as well. We just detailed out our thoughts on the offense moving forward. Obviously, I think that's the biggest question mark. I think another big question mark on the starter front, and I think this really plays into – the bullpen usage, which we kind of teetered a, a conversation on Monday about. But let's start with the starters. It's pretty imperative that Garrett Cole needs to be Garrett Cole, right? When he started slipping in May, the team kind of slipped a little as well. So your thoughts on Garrett Cole moving into the second half? I feel better about him. He's lasting longer. Um you know, he's the one starter that I, you can almost always pencil him in for, you know, at least getting into the seventh inning and giving the bullpen a break so they don't have to use four guys. And, you know, he rebounded well from his May. You know, we don't need him at the April level. It'd be great if he could go back to the April level, but I don't think anyone can expect that because he was playing out of his, he was pitching out of his mind in April. Um, like you said, with Rizzo, if they can get Rizzo back at 70%, if they could get Garrett Cole to be 80% of what he was in April, they'll be uh, set at least in his position. And, you know, he's the one who's the stopper. If they're losing and they need a win, Cole steps in and they usually end up winning the game. And he usually pitches well enough for them to win the game and help the offense out. So they don't have to score, you know, eight runs to stay in a game. We saw Carlos Rodon for five and a third innings of work, Stacey, right there before we hit to the all-star break. Carlos Rodon's impact on this team, what do you see for him? What can he do? And what are you expecting out of Carlos Rodon? I am expecting him to step it up within the next two starts because I think they're going to slowly – you know, integrate him in. They're not going to, you know, in his next star, even though there's an all-star break between starts, I don't think they're going to expect him to pitch eight innings and they're not going to push him too hard. But I'm thinking by the time August rolls around, he's the number two and they're going to expect him to be the number two. That's what they're paying him to be. And that's what they need him to be. And I feel like this might actually work in the Yankees favor if he stays healthy because he didn't pitch the first few months and he d doesn't have all those innings on his arms. So if they do make the playoffs, he's going to be a lot fresher than some of the other guys who are, you know, going into the playoffs. And if he can stay healthy, he could make a really big impact. 
at the time of this recording, we don't have the rotation just yet. I imagine they shuffle it around as well. If I had to earmark it, they might go Cole, Rodon, uh, Herman, Sevi Schmidt. Um, if I had to venture a guess, because things are shaky with Sevi right now. There is no <laughs> denying that. So I think if they slide him back a little bit, give him a little extra time here. Remember, he wasn't going to throw or do anything over the break. So we'll see if giving him a few extra days to try and tinker with stuff once the season gets back up and going. I think that might be huge. Um, I don't think you need Luis Severino to be, uh, you know, Luis Severino of old, considering Rodon is back. Obviously, we're anticipating Nestor back sometime in late August, maybe. Um, if I had to put a, a guess on it, there was some math involved because of the 60 day stuff. Oh, right. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not anticipating Sevi being this massive part of the rotation here moving forward. There is a very real possibility that Sevi gets bumped out of the rotation. Uh, the Yankees make some sort of move and get Johnny Brito or Randy Vasquez in as the five moving forward with Schmidt as the four. Your thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, <sighs> Sevi is just so far gone right now. And we spoke about it when we were talking about that, really the, the last start that he made and how um, just sad he was and how he couldn't figure out what was wrong with him. And like you said, he was taking a complete break during this all-star. I, I don't even think he was watching the game last night. I think he really was like stepping away from everything and just getting his mind right. And, you know, you're right. They don't need him to pitch like an ace because he doesn't need to have that pressure on him because he already has Cole and Rodon ahead of him. But if he could just, gosh, you know, five, six innings and not give up 10 runs, that'd be great. You know, a couple yeah. runs here and there and just get past the first couple of innings and put people away. And maybe the Yankees can even say to him, we're going to have you pitch five. Just do your best for five. So he doesn't have yeah. to keep thinking that he needs to last seven, eight. And you know what I mean? So yeah. Maybe they can do that and help him out and take the pressure off of him. Yeah, we'll see what Matt Blake and the team concoct for him moving forward. Um, Stacy, I mentioned the bullpen, and I think that a lot of – we're on it. I feel like we're at a teetering point with the bullpen. They were starting to falter right before the break. They, they blew like two games there at the break that were winnable. Mm -hmm. They have been incredible all season long, and that should not go overlooked. But that is not a given for the second half. Right. Guys, we're, we're getting to the dog days here. Guys are going to get tired, and they were already getting tired. So I think it piggybacks off of those starters so crucially that they need Cole. Right? Like I said, they need Cole. It doesn't have to be April Cole, but they need him Yeah, badly. And they need Carlos Rodon, like you said, in two, three turns to beat Carlos Rodon going six plus. Yeah, It's so important to get those bullpen guys a couple of days off. And we'll just see. I mean, that is so crucial uh, you can't overuse Michael King. You can't overuse Wandy. You can't overuse any of these guys because when they're like settled in, healthy, feeling good, they are the best in baseball. And you need them to be the best in baseball because the offense to this point has just not performed on a consistent basis enough for them to have those bad nights. Yeah. And it really does have to do with the starters. I mean, we said that the other day where um, – I mentioned how the bullpen was really, we were mentioning the bullpen really faltering at the end. And I said, well, you know, you had a whole bunch of starts here where, you know, Clark Schmidt only lasted five or Herman only went five or, you know, Brito and Vasquez, nothing against them. It's just, they weren't pitching long enough. So the bullpen had to come in earlier. And, you know, um, even with the Yankees and who they drafted, and you were talking about how a lot of these guys wouldn't be starters. And it almost feels like baseball is turning into where they don't expect guys to pitch past the fifth inning and they're building these bullpens to be like the main part of the pitching staffs. It's just, it's, it's so odd how baseball's changed in the last 10 years. Cause it used to be unheard of for bullpens to be built the way they are because in the dynasty years, it was like Mo wetland. You had a couple of setup guys, you know, like Jeff Nelson, Mike yeah. Stanton, but you didn't have like all these guys starting from the fifth inning. It was starting in the seventh, eighth, ninth, you know, and it's yeah. just, it's such a different thing now. And that adds up over time, clearly mm -hmm. adds up over the course of, you know, a week, two weeks, three weeks. That's, you know, every day, two extra innings over the course of a month, you know, that's 45 more innings, you know, like it's a lot of work. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. And again, if, uh, or not again, but uh, with no true long man, like a Ryan Weber, mm. 
guys are going one, two innings, right? So it means everybody's being used on a given day potentially or every other day. So it's a lot. Um, I wanted to touch on defense real quick. Do you have much concerns outside of, you know, Glaber at second, who's had a couple of mishaps this season that have been costly. Um, I still think the Yankees defensively behind the plate, they're below league average there when it comes to the running game. Uh, I'm wasn't not it supposed con- to get easier with the bigger bases. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not overly concerned with the defense. Are you? No, no. I am concerned with Glaber just because a lot of his mistakes are mental and I don't know what's going on with him. And even, you know, on the bases and sometimes at the plate and it's just like, what is happening with him? Um, Yeah. You know, and we talked about the outfield. I mean, you're playing some guys who didn't play outfield before this year in the outfield. (laughs) So you can't really expect them to be, you know, gold glove caliber. Um, (laughs) So if they get people back, if they trade for someone, who knows? Uh, We'll see what happens. But um, yeah. I'm not that worried about the defense. You know, Volpe had some miscues, but for the most part, he's been pretty solid at shortstop. I mean, that's not an easy position for anyone to play and especially for a rookie to come up and do it. So, you know, kudos to him. We'll see. Drop your uh, thoughts down below here on the YouTube side. Of course, if you're on the audio side, you can always come over to the YouTube side and vice versa. If you want to take us on the go, we have audio feeds for free everywhere. We are going to step aside, but something brand new for this show. We're going to take a break from baseball when we come back. This episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs is the best place to buy your next pair of shorts for the summer. Guys, it's getting hot. I don't care where you live. If you're on the East Coast or if you're like on the West Coast like me, I mean, I got the air conditioning on right now, which I haven't done like all year. I've been wearing my Bird Dogs. I'm wearing my Bird Dogs right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, they use anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. They're perfect to dress up. They're perfect to dress down. Casual, however you want to wear it. And of course, like I said, They've been sending us, uh, they sent us a couple of pairs. I've been wearing them and I've been absolutely loving them. They're super comfortable, they're versatile, and they're cheaper than other big brands like Lululemon. I have both pairs and I like, you know what? I like the Bird Dogs a little bit better. And of course, Locked On Yankees listeners have the opportunity to get some free stuff when you go to birddogs.com slash Locked On MLB and enter promo code Locked On MLB for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. I used it today when I had my coffee. That's birddogs.com slash Locked On MLB or uh, and enter the promo code locked on MLB for a free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise. Back here on lockdown Yankees, Stacy, we're going to do something totally different uh, here in this final segment. Of course, to get the baseball stuff out of the way, you can catch the series on Sirius XM this coming series starting on Friday night uh, against the Colorado Rockies West coast trip to open up the second half. So uh, fall asleep to, to the, to the call there, um, whatever, <laughs> baseball, 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 baseball. We talk about baseball for two and a half hours a week minimum on this show, right? We do that all year. <laughs> Stacey, we wanted to do something different here. We occasionally get questions for fan mail Friday that are like different, like, Show us like your favorite memorabilia piece. Remember someone asked us like, what's the cool oh, yeah. thing you have or an autograph or whatever, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we have a good loyal fan base. You guys are awesome. And I wanted to like just step aside from baseball for a little bit every now and then to just talk about other stuff. Um, and I want to talk about TV shows today. I know that's kind of like way out of left field, but hey, it's the all-star break. We need a break sometimes too. Stacey, what like are you, what do you watch? What, what are you like a TV viewer how how do you how do you not watch baseball i basically watch bravo all day because they'd show marathons of everything they had a below deck marathon uh last week and i think it was pretty much every season of below deck for like seven days in a row uh, below isn't deck that, below- that, that weird show that like isn't it like a uh, reality show right oh yeah they're on super yachts john johnny damon was on below deck med twice and really embarrassed himself his wife embarrassed americans in the mediterranean it was just really bad um yeah i love reality shows because i like shows that i don't have to i don't have to think when i watch them they're just there you know i sometimes have them playing when i'm working too uh, i'll mute it sometimes though but yeah i, I, I I'm, I'm a reality show person <laughs> okay so it's so are you like a love is blind type of type of person or? i've watched every season of love is blind yes okay. <laughs> <laughs> just because I was curious and uh, every time I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I'm not going to watch this. It's awful. I watch until the end to see who gets married and who doesn't. And uh-huh. yeah, 
Yeah, I like I've, mine. I've reluctantly TV. watched all of Love Is Blind as well. <laughs> I think except for one season, my girlfriend gets into it. Uh, who, who was? Oh, Nancy. Remember Nancy and Bartice? Oh my God, Bartice was the worst. There's a, there's a running gag <laughs> whenever we watch. Well, maybe it's mostly my thing, but whenever we watch uh, Love Is Blind, I'll always go. Uh, like when a girl pops up, I'll just be like, oh, she's not as ugly as Nancy. Like, you know, like the whole thing, like we're just like, she's so ugly. We're just like, she's beautiful. What do you, this is ridiculous. He was the worst. I mean, he, <laughs> well, no, Shake was the worst. I think Shake was the worst. Was that season one? He was horrible. Um, okay. But Bartice was a close second. I mean, <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah, that's just a running, a running joke in this household is the, oh, not as ugly as Nancy was. Um, I'm more, I'm, I, as far as reality stuff, I watch a little bit like Love is Blind, but it's not, I'm not really putting it on. I'm not going to lie. It's just, it's on. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I can get into it. For <laughs> yeah. A second. yeah. Uh, I watched this show called Alone. I don't know if you know Alone. It's a survival show and it is, uh, it's gripping every season. It's so good. They drop 10 contestants into uh, the wilderness, essentially, and they get 10 items. Oh, God. <sighs> with Last Man Standing wins 500K. So it's like just enough amount of money. Mm. Uh, and it literally like the, the whole thing is survive. Yeah. We'll see you. We'll see you later. And it's all shot by the contestants themselves. They have cameras and GoPros and stuff. And so it's not like overproduced or anything. There's no like voiceover like John has made this, you know, 14, whatever. They're not doing anything like that. Right. Yeah. It's, just, it's very like real. And it's all shot like by them. And it, I, I love it. I love this show. I like whenever a season comes out, there's season 10 right now, but it's not on like discovery or anything like that. Season, it's, on it's up to Plus. 10 seasons. Really? 10 seasons. Yeah. I've never even yeah. heard of it. <laughs> I know. That's just how TV is these days. Really? Uh, but it's great. I highly recommend alone. I love alone. Uh, every time I watch it, I'm like, yeah, I could do this. Yeah, I could do this. I'm like that. Like I'm that like high on my own supply where i'm just like oh yeah no i could go live in uh five degrees out in a hut yeah i could do that no chance uh, no chance yeah i i stay away from a lot of tv shows that everyone likes because um and i've spoken to people about this i don't like violence on tv i can't handle it i know it's not real i don't want people to say well it's not real i know it's not but there are certain shows where the violence is so realistic that you know in real life people could do that sort of thing to other people. And mm -hmm. it just makes me panic, like legitimately panic attack time. So I can't watch basically anything on TV anymore because everything has some sort of like Ted Lasso is great because uh, I, I don't get scared when I watch Ted Lasso. And there are other shows that I can watch that are OK because they're more funny and not scary. But you know, there were so many shows that everyone was into, you know, Walking Dead and um, Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones. I mean, I watched one episode and I was like, uh, -uh nope, not watching this again. <laughs> uh, drop your TV show recommendations down below here on YouTube. This is something we're going to do occasionally. We're not going to be like constantly talking about other stuff. Of course, this is still a Yankees podcast. Don't worry, guys. Yeah. Uh, we just want to switch up the mojo a little bit and uh, let you into our lives a little bit more since we like to try and connect with our community here on uh, YouTube and, of course, on our audio feeds. We love you, audio listeners. I know we talk about YouTube a lot, but we love you too over on the audio side. <laughs> um, but again, drop your uh, TV show recommend sh recommendations down below. And while you're down there, you can drop questions for Fan Mail Friday. That's coming up tomorrow. A mega episode here on Fan Mail Friday. Don't forget to be a part of it. You can Reply to that co pinned comment down below. And that's going to do it for today's Lockdown Yankees. I'm Steve Granato. And I'm Stacey Gatsoulias. We'll see you tomorrow.